we, so we try to, to yeah. get up on the track, or get back to, on track, okay. uh, and uh, to talk about what kind of uh, concepts and okay. qualification uh, a young consultant coach or to, uh, needs, to learn. needs to learn. So I'll proceed as though this is a basic uh, uh, introductory <laughs> uh, tools I use. So uh, one, one guide would be this uh, uh, article I have, which has been reproduced in the uh, USATA and in, in, on the web, uh, which, which says what TA, it, this is a standard TA uh, article for TA, but it includes my ideas. So I do hope that whoever, that, that you read that article as a sort of a way of introducing yourself to what I'm talking about. And in it, I start saying what we owe, what we owe Freud, and then burn. But I have included stuff that I have added into TA. I'm not going to worry now uh, uh, whether I uh, about credits, whether mm -hmm. it's this or that. It'll come come in automatically. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I consider that the developmental approach is a very important one. And in terms of the developmental approach. Let's start with this whole OK business that has been a big um, issue, mm. issue mm. Uh, that can be seen, just as you were saying, as uh, too primitive, as, as elementary, OK, OK, and joke, but it's a very important one. All right. So, Byrne talked about four forms of OK, and the, the, the TA way of dealing with them is different than the way I present it. And I do have an article, and it's called The Fifth Position, or something like that, that I refer people to. Mm. And the same, I will summarize that, that developmentally, we proceed through these stages, rather than talking about them as different people are in that position. And the article summarizes it, but I'll quickly mention it. The newborn infant starts uh, uh, with the euphoric OK, the world is good in paradise, and then around six months gets to a stage that Melanie Klein has called the stage of depression, that uh, I call despair, it's called it the stage of anxiety, it doesn't matter, but there is this kind of stage where the little in newborn infant uh, taking getting consciousness and the child realizes that the third toy that fell doesn't come up automatically and gets very frustrated and that the wonderful mother is not wonderful when there's toothache, mother doesn't cure, cure it. And so that comes after the euphoric okay, there's the um, uh, total not okay, I'm not okay, you're not okay. Baby so, can't. After, after heaven we have, or paradise we have hell. Yeah, hell. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so there's... So we know it all. Okay, and so there's the... I, I, mm. well, I shouldn't be, okay, anyway. So we continue, and then around three or four years, around the stage between, I don't know, three and four or five, something like that, see, look it up in my article, uh, the baby has to develop a what I call a defensive position, mm -hmm. has to develop some kind of a sense of what am I in relation to the world or what's the world like in, in relation to me. And at that point the baby de uh, de determines one of two positions and either I'm not okay, you're okay, which means translated, uh, I can't take care of myself, I can't manage you, or you mother, or the environment, or the culture, or whoever it is, the other knows I don't, or feels, or is competent, and I'm not. And the, that would be one type of existential position, and in regard to existence, and the alternative existential position is for uh, I, I know better than those around me. I, if I don't help myself, I won't get any help, and that's I'm okay. You're not okay. And uh, uh, you and I have developed. Uh, there is my article, but mm -hmm. we developed this theme in terms of types of personality yeah. types, and uh, we talk about type one. I'm not okay, and you're okay, mm -hmm. or versus type two. I'm okay, you're not okay. And this gets formed 
the def I call it the defensive position, yeah. that one of these two is a defensive. A defensive against, I'm not okay, you're not okay. This is the way I view the world at times of crisis. And, yeah, this is the way I view the world. Now, it depends on the way I have been handled or the relationships I have had around that period between two and five, four or five or whatever it is. Now, uh, after that, ideally at some point, then comes a particular stage of development or other, what I would be the script say, stage, where quite apart from developing this uh, existential position or with the existential position, the child or the person uh, tries to formulate what life is like, specifically orients himself or herself to the future. Okay. What's the future going to be? And now we have categories for the future. Um, geography, where will I want, where will I be living, relationships, who will be my partner, marriage, etc. It's all based on whatever experience this child has. It's a kind of vision of, of his own life, his or her own life. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we have all these debates that go on about the genetics, culture versus nurture, culture, nurture, etc. And I leave it up to you to choose these, the, mm -hmm. the, the, your favorite authors or your favorite interpreters about nature, nurture. And I do, have, I do operate as a counselor or I, I, I do use this concept of type 1 and type 2. And People then often come up to me and say, no, 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 I, what type am I, and I'm this way, and this type, and this type, and so on. And my point is, all of us have the potential for all of these types. Re too rigid. To, yeah. Too rigid, for, uh, yeah. in particular for yeah. a coachee, uh, is uh, that I talk about preference and not yeah. about type That's or character type. But in my mind, I yeah. have, uh, there's a kind of... Yeah. Uh, character type within and that yeah. leads me to different ways to work with a person and that, that, uh, yeah. that's uh, the result and the benefit I get out of it. And it can be very helpful sometimes. I, I do remember one example which is a, a funny one because one, yeah. uh, automatically if a person comes for help uh, they sound as though they're the type 1 mm -hmm. person but they're not necessarily and I do remember that's one right. man uh, who came in, uh, uh, dragged in by his wife, and he was suicidal, and he really, he, well, there he was, and he looked like, he sounded completely like a type 1, because mm -hmm. he had reached, really, the total not okay, mm -hmm. he was totally su suicidal. So, he looked, everything he said and did sounded as though he was a type 1. However, this was in the days where people were smoking, and I happened to be smoking, and my ash, uh, the ash was falling, and the man sees that, he jumps up and he gets an ashtray. Mm -hmm. and Very service-oriented, yeah. <laughs> but also type 2. Yeah. He was, I'm the therapist, yeah. and nevertheless, he... He, he has cares. to, mm -hmm. he doesn't let, he's not, he's going to protect me from messing up my dress or whatever it is with the cigarette ash. So these little indicators in the here and now, mm -hmm. so immediately I could see that, that I got something about the type. And so I knew that talking with him from a parent ego state and insisting even that he make a no suicide contract was not going to work. Mm -hmm. Whereas, in general, people think that you can make a no suicide contract and it works and so on. With other people, you know it will work and mm -hmm. you use your parent ego state. But this is a parenthesis. I'm going to keep using my parentheses and get mm -hmm. off the tangent. Okay. So developmentally, then we establish pretty much that type. And then in the here and now, it is helpful for a counselor to have a sense about the type and to learn the characteristics. Now, what have I written about um, um, the, the topic of type? So look up this article of mine. Uh, as I said, uh, the fifth position I think is useful yeah. in, in terms of. Uh, and, and even in the book we wrote two years ago, exactly. it's a German one, but life coaching, meaning Lebenscoaching, there's a lot of stuff concerning the types. The type. in, 
and uh, just to give an idea, uh, meaning yeah. we used uh, Otero as a type 2 and uh, Humbert yeah. as a type 1, just to illustrate it and to make it a little bit clear how uh, it, it could function and uh, yeah. what, it, what it maybe means uh, when we uh, work with, with a person uh, to provide some help. And that's yeah, right yeah. and we are talking within the context of a counselor what a counselor needs to learn but also in terms of working with a client yeah. and the counselor we're talking within a framework of the fact that the counselor works in the here and now and the value of these three ego states is because it is to, to underline the fact that although we work with the here and now, we are really working with the past events. Yeah. And that is a con and that's the big contrast with psychoanalytic or other approaches where or even talking about traumas where we're not going to focus on past. Yet the past is there with us all the time. An early decision that brutality mm -hmm. solves it. Mm -hmm. But under beneath the decision there can be a survival conclusion mm -hmm. which may mean that you may change the decision and change your formulated belief and be capable of saying with absolute conviction brutality does not solve problems mm -hmm. but in, in the belly sometimes yeah. people use the term belly in the belly yeah, it's felt that so that happened. is the only way to yeah. solve things yeah. Yeah. And the new way of solving it yeah. is just oh. so people can experience cure, cures of something and nevertheless so it's uh, you know you can connect it even to Pavlov's discovery mm. about the salivating which is the, a comparable idea that salivation will occur under certain circumstances yeah. regardless yeah. of whether yeah. we think yeah. that this is a, yeah. a good idea or a good thing to do mm. or not yeah. or necessary and in yeah. other circumstances it's very necessary and I think it's, it's uh, for, a, for a coach uh, who usually wouldn't work as a therapist uh, in, uh, uh, in my profession yeah. in my field of uh, professional field that means at least you have to be aware that such kind of solar yeah. conclusions are underlying and that maybe you have to find a way how to Make it uh, some way visible or to, or, to, uh, yeah. or or able to work with, uh, even when you are shouldn't work as a gestalt uh, therapist uh, in a coaching session. Yeah. Huh? Well, but I have my favorite example, which is written up in some of my articles. Mm. Is the case of Tom. I use the word Tom, and he had he had a problem of uh, whenever his boss came and mm -hmm. came came in. Uh, he had the terrific impulse to hide under the desk, which was not yeah, very effective. Yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, I love this. I, I used this. I had used this example at, with, with in a in a workshop and started teasing people. And he was an, mm. this was an example of somebody in business. I mean, mm. so yeah, yeah, sure. in mm. was uh, the kind of case that a, a, a business consultant would have. Man says, I. I well, so I ask people, you know, what's the cause or what's the reason? So, okay, the standard answer was the authority problem, yes. Mm -hmm. But there's no authority problem. The man gets along fine with his boss. He likes him, etc., etc. So we get, I uh, love that exercise, you know, tell me what the mm -hmm. cause, tell me how to cure it, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll jump into how we found it. Uh, uh, when he was, when uh, his father was alcoholic, when the father came in at during the night, he was taught by his mother when he heard the door bang to hide under the bed. Mm -hmm. So this was a wonderful survival mm -hmm. conclusion, which was very helpful to him. We, what was funny, we got to identifying what happened was when we realized that he had not had problems with those boss in the past and these problems had started just recently. We started trying to find the reason. <laughs> the reason was not psychological. The reason was that he moved to a new office mm. and that the door banged in this office okay. when the supervisor came in and in the previous office there was no door and it didn't bang okay. so mm. their relationship was fine. So to try and treat try and help this man improve his relationship with the boss mm. was not going to solve 
mm -hmm. is impulse to hide. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that solved it was to ask the boss, please, do not yeah. bang the door. <laughs> of traumatic or yeah. constraints, from traumatic uh, experience or constra in, inner constraints, by knowing about it, by uh, acting different and adding new experience and getting more and more relaxed and relaxed uh, on what uh, could be a, a, an impulse from from the past. That's yeah? right. So, and and uh, my experience was really a change. Yeah, a change from, not from uh, from today to tomorrow, but uh, yeah. in sometimes a very short yeah. time. Yeah, from disuse. That yeah. thing, it doesn't. Yeah. But it can stay there. It can stay there like an old bullet that's lodged in, that's in right. the flesh. Yeah. yeah that was very dangerous mm -hmm. at a certain point, yeah. or if it had moved, etc., but now it's lodged, yeah. then you leave it there, but you just don't deal with it. This brings us also to one more point about the development, mm -hmm. that which I didn't talk about, that I look at the ego states as uh, developmentally also, that we start out only with a child ego state, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. And one of the points I make in that article, the bond, I could refer to it, the article in the Barnes book, the What Shall I Do yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. I, that is another contribution of mine to TA, that when we talk about child, we just, it isn't just child, it's many children, because there's mm -hmm. a difference between a two-year-old, a six-month-old, and an eight-year-old. And we, so we are talking about not a child ego state, a children ego state, mm -hmm. and I draw it in various circles, yeah. and survival conclusions are lodged in this very primitive mm -hmm. early circle. Decisions are lodged in later circles, mm -hmm. if we take the analogy of a tree trunk yeah. and circles yeah. uh, within or, the child. Or just like an onion, we, yeah. we take something like That's an onion. Right. Yeah. And what you were referring to was the adult, and I do want to add in here really fast, is that developmentally, we don't start out with all three ego states. This is where I disagree with some of the TA people, they have the early ego states, and P1, P2, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bother with this at all. Uh, I do say that we start out with child ego state. We add the pet ego state around six, eight, seven, six or seven because we're taking in all the stuff from our environment. So our parent ego state doesn't only contain stuff from our actual parents, but the environment, the culture, yeah. really the culture, or the whole culture is a part of the parent ego state. And the adult, which you were referring to, the ability, really does not start until after adolescence. And one of the reasons there are so many conflicts in adolescence, both inner conflicts of the young person and conflicts mm -hmm. with the family, is because that adult is trying to <laughs> develop itself. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's a f and trying to uh, um, cancel out the parent ego state at the same time needs stuff from the parent ego state to integrate it into the adult ego state so that development can also be seen as the development of different ego states and their relationship as developing differently and all that happens at adolescence. The way in which I manage my, my three ego states mm -hmm. and in, this is a very important, I have not spelled it out enough, I don't have, I don't, I've implied it somewhere but I've not written about it enough or at all really, and yet I think it's very important for people who work with adolescents yeah. to really understand that an awful lot of the adolescent issues and problems can be understood if you realize that the ego states are fighting amongst each other within the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's which ego state is going to be my most important ego state, mm -hmm. the one that is going to guide me the most. And that needs to be tied in and that's work for somebody to do in the future that I recommend to you who love the types. Mm -hmm. How the type issue operates in regard to adolescent's experience, what is happening mm -hmm. in the yeah. life of an adolescent at a certain point. And the type sometimes is modified at adolescence, I believe. 
or affected or changed. I think there's a lot of new work to be done in there mm -hmm. that I recommend to That's, other people. Yeah, okay. That's an interesting idea. In, in terms of working with adolescents. Yeah. And uh, so much now is needed in terms of probation of adolescents and the adolescents and the violence and so on. There's a great deal of work needs to be done there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And that's not only for therapists, that's for people getting into business. After all, that's they choose right. their careers yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. We, we extend our lessons. When we get to script, we also need to think about how the script gets modified at our lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't really, we'll, we'll get back to that later on. Okay, so we go, went, got as far as survival conclusions in our yeah. story. Uh, at this point, Maybe we can talk about ra my contributions uh, with rackets and racketeering, mm -hmm. because this again has become a part of transactional analysis. Although the word racket, the references to rackets, there have been so many additional definitions of rackets that it can be very confusing. 